Post after post of missing children in Ukraine, families desperate to find their loved ones. Most come from the cities most severely impacted by the fighting. And at the top of that list is Mariupol. These pictures of missing children were provided by parents and police for Magnolia, a Ukrainian NGO tracking missing children. Their Ukrainian director told CNN they are inundated with cases. The number of missing children is closely to 2,000 per only one month. A scene of utter devastation. Amid the chaos and uncertainty, families told CNN relatives, including children, went missing. And now, from this void, a story has emerged of people not missing but deported. Unfortunately, some of people are stolen, uh, forced, stolen by Russians. Some were displaced in Russia, but no one knows information of where exactly and for what. CNN has spoken to multiple Mariupol residents who say soldiers from the Russian army forcibly evacuated them to Russia. Some of those who asked to stay were told no. This testimony is from Anna. We are using a pseudonym to protect her identity and a CNN producer is reading her words. Like many others, Anna, a young woman, was living under bombardment in Mariupol. They came in and said, it's an order. He told us, if you make a fuss, things will get worse. Many told us that it started with a promise of evacuation. Soldiers came to where they were staying and told them it was dangerous and that they needed to get out. And so they went to shelters and then camps further and further into Russian territory. It was then that they realized that there was very little option to get out. CNN spoke to multiple people on the condition of anonymity and using Anna's testimony, we started tracking the key locations along the deportation route. We are not identifying individual routes for the safety of our interviewees. This is the town of Bezimene. These tents indicate one of many sites across the town where interviewees told us they were taken on the first step of their journey. Anna described her stop as a, quote, registration camp, where they said they were interrogated for hours by Russian and Russian-backed forces. <laughs> Russia claims these camps are to harbour refugees, another shelter seen here in Tagnarog. And while some interviewees saw the journey to Russia as a necessary passage to safety, others, including Anna, found the experience distressing and forced. This is Anna's migration card, a standard document provided to her by Russia upon entry, but it masks a troubling journey. Anna told CNN they were forced to surrender their phones and passports during intense security checks. They photograph you from all angles. I felt we were treated like criminals or being held as the property of the Russian Federation. I didn't feel we were free to leave. After questioning, interviewees told CNN they were transferred to other locations dotted across Russia and Russian-occupied territory. Some made onward journeys as far as Moscow and St. Petersburg. The limitations on freedom of movement for those interviewed by CNN seem to vary based on their access to money and family ties in Russia. Ukraine's government claims 45,000 people have been forcibly taken to Russia so far, which CNN cannot independently verify. International human rights conventions prohibit the forced deportation or transfer of civilians. After a week of transfers across Russian territory, Anna was finally given permission to leave and decided to drive to the border with Estonia, a route others have also managed to take, according to the Estonian authorities. However, others still remain in Russia or unaccounted for entirely. And while the conflict in Ukraine continues, the panicked search for the missing, feared dead or deported goes on. Katie Poglay, CNN, London.